All right, welcome back to a new Touch Designer tutorial. And in this one, we are going to look at how to create a wall. <laughs> so we're going to actually build a completely generative brick wall with uh, like from scratch with Touch Designer. And the basic idea here is that we have a basic render network, very simple, where we're just rendering a grid. And then we're using a PBR material with some custom maps. So we're going to create a color, normal, height, and roughness map to create these bricks. So super straightforward. And the main juicy part is happening inside of this base. So we have this textures base where we're creating some bricks we're using instancing and a lot of like noise and distortion and these kind of things to make the whole thing look organic, adding some color and these kind of things. And then we're just using those as the corresponding maps here in the PBR. And this is going to be the final result. And as usual, there's many, many uh, things you can change here, much room to play. And yeah, let's just get started. So as usual, I'll delete everything and we're going to start from scratch. So I'm going to start by adding a grid sop. And I'm going to change the rows and columns here to 800 by 800. If your computer isn't very strong, I would highly recommend going down with this to like 4 or 500 by 500. I'm going to change the size to 1.6 by 0.9. So we have a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. And then I'm going to turn off this viewer, add an attribute create. I would also turn off the viewer here and turn both of these on. We just need to do this if we're working with normal maps or bump maps, height maps. So I'm going to add a geo from here, geometry comp, as well as a camera and a light. We also want to have an environment light and environment lights always need an environment map. So I'm going to just do that by adding a movie file in, putting that on here, and we're going to use the cloudy ocean 2K. All right, we don't need to change anything about that. On my camera, I'm going to change the translate Z to 1.9. And on my light, I'm just going to move a bit closer, uh, but we're going to look at this later on again. Then for the render, I'm just going to add a render top and I'm going to add a now call this BG and we don't actually need to display that in the background right now. So this is the basic render network that we are going to have for this to work uh, for our project to work. We're going to need a PBR material. So I'm going to add that here, put that on here, Parm material. And you can already see how the background is changing. Um, I'm going to go down with metallicness and go down with ambient occlusion to 0.3 and roughness to like 0.5. So this is going to be uh, important later on. So before we actually advance here, I want to quickly just explain what we're actually doing. You might already be familiar with substances. So when we're working with PBR, we don't have to use substances or all of these maps. You can already see like basically if we go down for roughness here or go up with metallicness, you can already see like the material is working and it's reflecting the, oh, by the way, turn off all of these viewers. Uh, it's already reflecting the um, environment map and everything. So it, it works just on its own. But um, what we want to do here is we want to use maps for all of these different maps. So you can do that with the substance top. And for example, if I change this to concrete, then we have a sort of group of different maps or textures here. And for example, if I use a substance select, I can select one of these. So for example, the base color that we have right now, and then I can use that on here and you can see it's mapped onto the grid right away. Right now it's really bad resolution. We could change that here in the substance, but never mind. That's not what we're doing here, but basically this is the idea. We have these different maps. So for example, we also have like a height map or a normal map. And we want to create all of these maps ourselves from scratch for the pre PBR. Uh, brick wall. All right, so let's just get rid of this and let's add a base component here because we want to add some textures. We want to create some textures. I'm going to call this textures very straightforward. I'm going to give this a color of like pink and let's just dive into here. So to create the bricks, what we want to do is use instancing. And I'm going to use top instancing and some ramps to do this. So I'm going to start with a ramp top and I'm going to change the resolution to 15 by 18. I'm going to change the pixel format to 32 bit float. It's quite important. 
All right, from here, I'm going to add two more ramps. Just add one ramp and copy it. For the second one, I'm going to go to output and just set the resolution only and also change the type to vertical. Here we actually want to combine this, but not with our operation multiply, but operation add. And we're also going to change the type to vertical. Before we advance here, I am actually going to set up some more things. So I'm going to add a reorder. Put this in here. Output green, input two. And then add a map and a null. I'm going to call this null pause as usual. I'm going to shift all of this over here. And let's set up our bricks here before we advance with the instancing. So for the bricks, we could just use a rectangle stop, but with the rectangles, we don't, we, we were not able to uh, have round corners. So a very easy trick to do that is to just use the super quad instead. And with that, what I'm going to do is change the radius here to point, uh, 2.5 and we don't actually need any Z depth. Just want it to be flat because we, we're looking like, because we're creating a, a map here and um, like a 2D image, basically. I'm going to change the rows and columns to like 50 by 50. I'm going to change the Z exponent to zero, change orientation to Z axis. And then we want to change the X, Y exponent to something smaller as well. And that, so now you can see we have some round edges. So like maybe 0 0.05 is a good value here. This already looks more like a brig. <laughs> uh, let's add a transform, change the uniform scale to 0 0.05. And from here, what we can do is add a geometry again. So what we're going to do here is create a second render setup. So I'm going to add a camera, but for this camera, we're going to go to uh, offer like to view projection orthographic, and I'm going to change the offer width to like three. And on my geo, what I'm going to do is turn on instancing, and I'm also going to add a render here again. Just display that in the background. Let's also add a constant so our bricks are going to be white. All right, so we have one lonely brick there in the background. Let's create many of those. On instancing, I'm going to use pause for translation and R for X and G for Y. So for now, we have a little step, yeah, no stairs here. Uh, on my math, I'm going to rearrange uh, R to minus 2 and 2. So this is basically X. And Y, I'm going to rearrange to minus 1.1 and 1.1. So that already kind of looks like um, bricks. But what we want to do here, if we basically, if we bypass this ramp, we have a grid, right? We're just using horizontal and vertical uh, positions here, values, whatever. So basically I'm using this ramp to offset every second row. So first off, what we want to do is change the period to 0.11. And let's also change the white here to black. And then let's add another thing here in, the, in like another handle in the center, just by clicking on, on there. Let's change the interpolation here to step. And now we can change our value slightly. So 0 0.03, for example, is a good value to offset these bricks. Okay, I, I can't believe they still haven't changed <laughs> the, um, the ramp in the new version. <laughs> Anyways. So now we have our bricks. Now we can like move closer, further away. So for example, this, I think 2.63 might be good value. Cool. So um, for the render here, if you have a good computer again, then you can go up with the resolution to 1920 by 1080, which I would recommend. But if you don't have a strong PC, I would recommend keeping it at 1280. Otherwise it's gonna be very demanding with the PBR. And I would also suggest going to like 16 bit float here. All right, all right, all right. So let's have a look at how we can use this. So first off, what I'm going to do, actually, before we continue here, the post-processing, I'm going to add a noise here and change the output to just noise. And I'm going to go down with the amplitude to like 0.1. And I'm just going to change the seed here, add a null, and call this call for color. And I'm going to go to instance two here use my color here and just use the same color for all of these. So now you can already see we have some variation in the bricks and uh, just by adding some noise here for the color. So all of the bricks have different brightnesses. Cool, or gray values, whatever. 
Cool. So next step is to add some color here. So I'm going to add a lookup and a ramp. And here, what I'm going to do is actually change the black to white. You can see now everything is white and I'm going to change the white to black. So basically inverting this because, you know, the stuff, what I don't know what it's called, but the stuff between the bricks is usually some kind of white or grayish color. So we don't want this to be black. And uh, now I'm going to add another handle again in the center and just make this slightly like brownish, reddish, whatever kind of color you think fits best to these bricks. All right, that looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is just add an out top. We don't need to see these right now. And I'm going to go back here and grab this now with a null. And I'm going to call this color. On my PBR, I'm going to put this onto base color map. And now you can already see we are rendering these uh, nicely and works well. On my light, I'm actually going to change my dimmer to two. And uh, let's go back in here and set something else up. So again, we want to have a second out because we want to create a height and a normal map. So what I'm going to do now is just add another null here and just copy this. I'm going to call this one normal and the other one height. For the normal, I'm going to add a normal map top before. And now on my PBR, I'm going to go to maps again and use my normal as normal map bump. And if I bump up my bump scale <laughs> to 10, you can already see this looks sort of 3D-ish, right? It goes in the right direction. And now we can uh, increase this by enabling the height map and using our height map here. I would go down with the parallax scale, turn displace vertices on. Now you can already see how we're like displacing these bricks. And you can see, depending on the brightness, they have different like heights, basically. Okay, so let's change the display scale to 0 0.03. And um, what we might want to do already is change our light. So we can maybe move a bit closer and go to shadows, turn shadows to soft and change the shadow resolution and multiply that by four. Again, if you don't have a very good laptop, you might only want to multiply this by two or not at all. Okay, so maybe let's change it like this. Something like that. Okay, so now you can already see the bricks have shadows. Yeah, right now it still looks uh, pretty basic and boring. So let's add some distortion and make this actually look organic and interesting. So first off, I'm gonna actually split my view here and go back and turn on top viewer so we can see what we're doing. This only works, by the way, if you have turned the display on off on one of the tops that you wanna see here, uh, right. So I'm going to add some noise because, you know, what, what you can see here behind the bricks is a is transparency, right? We have zero alpha there, so we can add something behind. So we can add a bit of, bit of a terrain behind that. So I'm going to change this to just noise. I'm going to change the seed, the period to two. And I'm just going to go down with all of these to zero. Amplitude 0.3 and offset 0 0.2, 0 0.1. And then I'm going to add a comp here add this underneath and change this to over. So now you can already see the white stuff, I don't still don't know what it's called, behind the bricks um, is, is uh, the rise in, in strength or in height. So if I change the seed here, you can see here on the right that we have some varying height there, which makes the whole thing already seem a bit more organic. And um, now I wanna distort some things there to make it look cool. So let's add a null right click and collapse selected like right click anywhere and let's call this distort let's click press c here and give this a color and let's move in here so all right what we want to do in here is first off displace the bricks slightly by some noise so we're going to use a lot of noise just this noise is just the best <laughs> it's so versatile so for this noise i'm going to turn uh, this RGB to just noise again, turn off monochrome, which is highly recommended always when you're working with displays. I'm going to change displays weight to 0.02 on both axes and then add that in here. So obviously this is way too extreme and you can see uh, one of one little problem here that we have when we're distorting this, but not the colors, right? The colors are still straight up 
the bricks that we were getting from here and the distortion is well <laughs> distorted like the image that we're getting out here is distorted so we're going to match that in, in a second a minute or like five minutes <laughs> anyways all my noise i'm going to go i'm going to actually change a lot of things so first off let's change the period to be a bit higher harmonics to three harmonic spread to five and harmonic gain to like 0.4 and then i'm going to go down my amp with my amplitude to 0 0.04 so it's really very slightly only and now we have some slightly distorted breaks so that it looks a bit more organic Cool, so the second thing now that we want to do here is add some cracks everywhere. Like not the big cracks that you saw in the beginning, but more like the, like the small stuff. For that, again, we're going to use noise. I'm going to change this to just noise. And, and again, change the seed. Let's go down to the period with the period to like 0.6. Change this to 3 and 3 and 0.4. All right, that's, that's looking good, but we don't want it to be spread that much. So first off, before I change anything, I'm gonna add a comp here. So you can actually, you can always see what we're doing, which is generally very help, helpful, what I love about Touch Designer. So if I already like put that in here and just leave it as multiply, that already looks pretty interesting. It's not too bad. By the way, did I change this to? Yeah, okay. Um, it looks okay-ish. But there's still some things we definitely want to change here. So first off, I'm going to change this to subtract, which makes it look worse first. But um, I only want to have these cracks or like, yeah, these things. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. Spots uh, like somewhere and not everywhere. So what we're going to do is add a function. Change this to input one thing like roof exponent. <laughs> And I'm going to change the exponent value here to 14, at uh, 40, and change the like turn replace arrows on, so we don't have these weird alpha things in the background. This is already looking better, but it's uh, way too dark. It's way too extreme. So I uh, the easiest way I found was to just use a lookup here, a ramp, and then instead of white, we can like go down to some almost black value, like a dark gray. And then you can see we only get these spots, like, not everywhere. Okay, I feel like this isn't right resolution. Yeah, and I'm correct. <laughs> so let me change this to 1920 by 1080, and it immediately looks much better. So, okay. Right. Let me continue. After uh, this, like, actually, now we have the same cracks everywhere. Cracks, that's kind of what, the, yeah, whatever. <laughs> It's a long video, third attempt. Anyways, um, let me put in another comp here. And we can just multiply it before subtracting. And it makes it look a bit better because like the um, cracks in, in, like, in between the bricks are, aren't as strong. So they're more like inside of the bricks. I feel like it looks a bit better. Okay, and one main thing here, which is probably makes everything just immediately looks much better and more organic is another noise but like with a very small period right now it looks more like cloth so if we now use a noise here with a very small period like 0 0.006 let's change this to input times noise and let's go up with the offset all the way and the amplitude down to like 0 0.06 and now you can already see everything has this grainy texture if we compare it immediately much more satisfying can also go up with the harmonic spread a bit maybe but we don't really do have to do much more here but yeah already looks much better cool so to make sure that the colors are also distorted in the same way then uh, like as the height and the normal map we can just copy this and now the problem would be though if we just copy it that we'd have to you know already looks a bit better uh that we'd already like that we have jesus <laughs> The problem would be that we would always have to co copy every every change we do here into here. So a very simple way to avoid that is to simply use this as the clone master. So I'm going to just type in distort in here. And now anything we change in here is also going to affect all the operators in here. And if there's an operator in here that you don't want to be affected by cloning, there's this little flash here. So if you click that, this component is not going to be affected by the clone master. 
if in case you wondered what that flash was for. <laughs> All right, cool. So this is already looking pretty nice. Let's do some more fun things. So first, let me add some cracks. So I'm going to add a, save this and add a null here. Right click and collapse select it. And I'm going to call these cracks. Give this like a black color for black cracks. I'm going to go in here and instead of a null, I'm going to add an out. Cool. And now in between these, we want to do the magic. And that's going to be done with surprise, surprise, with a noise. So I'm going to change this to uh, noise, uh, like the RGB here. So we don't, we're don't. we just taking the input here for resolution. And uh, what we're going to do then is um, change the scale Y here to 0.1, the noise. And what I'm going to do is change the seed maybe to 2591. I think remember that's a good value. Change the period here to 1 and all of these to, uh, to 2 and all of these to 1. And then go down with the exponent to 0 0.01. And then what we can do now is add an edge. And you can already see maybe where I'm going with this. So we have our sort of cracks here. I'm going to change the strength to 10 and the sample step to like 2 and 2. Then next step now is, if we just display that in the background, is that we want to dis distort these again because they're not very, they don't look very organic. So I'm going to use a displace as well as a noise. And uh, again, we when we're working with displacement and noise, it makes sense to make the noise um, colorful. On my displays, what I'm going to do is change the displays way to 0 0.02 and then put that in here. So first off, that's a bit too extreme. On my noise, what I'm going to do is change my harmonics to 3, harmonic spread to like 2.7 and harmonic gain to like 0.4. And that looks like some nice cracks looks a bit weird there. Maybe actually let's just use some other cracks. Of course, not all of the noises work perfectly, but uh, yeah, I mean, this looks all right. We just have two straight cracks. To uh, make them fade out, what we can do, like because they're just straight from top to bottom, we can add a ramp here, like a vertical one. And um, yeah, it's already set to multiply, basically, now we're just fading this out. Let's just have a look. Go back here and add a composite and put that underneath here and change like multiply also works, but I think subtract makes much more sense. So basically subtracting these cracks from the wall and that looks pretty good. Well, let's actually copy this and use it for the colors as well. Mm, there we go. And like this. And now we have really cool looking cracks. And again, we can go in here and we can change the noise and it's going to be like different cracks in the wall every time now. Looking good. One thing we haven't actually looked at is the roughness. So from my distort is uh, I'm, I'm going to add another noise. <laughs> As I said, it's a lot of noises. And on here, again, change the seed, and then I'm going to change the amplitude to 0 0.3 and the offset to 0 0.2. Let's add another out. Let's go back here and just grab this out again for now and call this roughness. Roughness. And I'm going to use this roughness on here. And you can already see that it makes quite a difference. Now we have this shininess um, only at different, like like on different parts, and that adds a lot of dynamics. One more thing here, because we haven't used enough noises, I'm going to use another noise here for the colors. And for this noise, what we want to do is actually add the second input, like the the colors as the second input, um, because if we don't have this noise, like probably nobody cares really, but <laughs> it bothers me that you know the more like always the darker colored bricks are going to be those that stand out most. So um, to to have uh, like independent color or more or less independent color, like independent of the brightness basically, 
then we can use this noise. And let's just go down with the offset here and the amplitude. And now basically we can change the colors with this. We could, and that's how I did it in the beginning, add a second render where we render out everything with color, but that's really not an efficient way because we're already rendering twice, uh, which is already very demanding. Well, what we can do here now is play around a bit with the light again. So let me just close this. Um, so really matters now where the light is coming from. I think this, I feel like this is a really good angle. We can uh, change the roughness here, but I think 0.5 is a good value. We can also change the brightness basically by changing the ambient occlusion. And we can also make these metallic bricks, which actually looks terrible. Yeah, we can we can go in here and we can pretty much change anything. So the the basic idea, what you have to understand with PBR is just that it's like, you're really just working with zeros and ones in the end again. Like you're just working with a black and white 2D image and we're just, just have to think about whatever is white is going to be um, like sort of pushed out more or whatever is black is, isn't pushed out as much. So um, that's really just the way to, to think here. So um, it's, it really translates very well and using PBR you can just create, I mean this looks quite realistic I'd say. It's not th th that bad and um, obviously you can add a lot of more, more things. You could add something like plants or something like a moss going over it with more noise or whatever it is you want to do. And you can also create completely different textures like wood or metal or whatever and you can get inspired by that. The cool thing with this is uh, right now, I mean the FPS isn't that great. So again, you can go down with the pixel format, you can go down with the resolution here. And uh, you can also go down with the resolution here, the outcome. You can go down with the like amount of rows and columns, and that's all gonna affect uh, the FPS quite a bit. So you could like the 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 cool thing about this uh, compared to a substance is that with a substance you can't actually do anything real time in the end because if you add a substance, you do have some input values that you can change here. For example, the concrete. Um, if I change this though. It usually like takes a bit to to process. It, it's not that fast. So here, if it isn't too high resolution, you can actually animate parameters. So for example, we could animate this noise. ABS time dot seconds times point three maybe. And now we're like animating the colors, which is kind of doesn't really make sense, but <laughs> you can do that. Uh, or you could animate the the cracks for whatever reason. So again, ABS time dot seconds maybe point 0.1. I mean, it's look, gonna look super weird, but yeah, it, it is possible. And I just wanna show you what you can do with this. Cool, so I, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanna support me and get some extra contents and have some meetups with me and other patrons, then feel free to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. And a huge thanks and shout out to all the people that are already supporting me. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.